Hey everyone, how we all doing? What's poppin'? Today I'm going to do a build with the new Desert Lux kit, uh, which by the way, if you own the base game, is free, so you should totally go and download it because it has a couple of really good items. This was a really fun and also slightly challenging build for me to do because usually when I build these funky modern homes, I usually don't limit my packs. I let myself kind of go wild and use whatever I want. And for this build, I decided to challenge myself a little bit and just use the base game and the Desert Lux kit, both so that I could force myself to use the kit as much as possible, and also because I wanted it to be downloadable for everybody, regardless of if they had other packs. And I had a really great time building this. It was fun to stretch myself a little bit with a build and do something that is a little bit different, even if I do build modern builds pretty regularly. And I had so much fun. Um, one of the other things that I did with this build to make it a little more interesting is instead of just doing a basic starter home, I actually built a home for a whole family. So this has, this build actually sleeps for Sims. It has a parent's bedroom and then it has a little kid room. And yeah, I thought that was really fun. Um, I use a reference picture for this like I do for a lot of my modern builds. Um, and there's a lot of things usually in reference photos that don't translate super well. Like they had this cool little fenced in area that I kind of replicated, but it didn't look quite like the photo. And then they also had a nice little fancy garage thing, which obviously we don't have garages in The Sims. We don't have real cars. So that was something that I had to kind of work around and play with a little bit to try to get things to look how I wanted them. So they looked good in The Sims, but also I, I sometimes get a little stuck on my reference pictures and I'm like, oh, I want it to look just like the reference picture. It has to be the same. And obviously it, it doesn't have to be the same. Um, because that's not how things work. But I, there's so many items in the new kit that I really like. I think my favorite two are probably the open doors. And then I also really like the window, which I actually end up swapping in a little bit later. And I guess I really like this little um, overhang thing too, because before you could kind of create one manually by just using that base game, like smooth paver, smooth keeper, whatever fence. And then you can make a lattice with it and then just cross out all of the little floor that populates inside of your fence. Um, so that's really annoying and it's nice that we have one now just in the game. For the inside vibes, I wanted to go for like kind of like a dark theme. Um, so I had a lot of black. I tried to keep it very minimal because the vibe of the Desert Lux kit is pretty minimal and I wanted to kind of inspire that. But then also I decided to use like a little bit of color. So I have kind of a blue living room to brighten things up a little bit. And oh boy, oh boy, did I struggle with the floor plan of this thing because I built the shell and I was like, okay, this is great. I'll do the roof. I figured this out. And then I started trying to build the living room and then it wasn't working. And then I had kept kind of adjusting the walls, readjusting the walls, kept feeling like it looked stupid. And then I was like, oh my gosh, am I double guessing myself? What's going on? And you can see here, I'm, I'm double guessing myself over this gosh darn chair so many times. And I went through so many swatches and so many iterations of the gosh darn living room. I'm just happy that it turned out good and that I'm just overall really happy with how this build looks. I think it looks different than a lot of the other stuff that I've made and it's just base game in the kit. So it means that anyone can download it and you can have a really cool modern house for your Sims to play in and not need to own a crazy amount of kits. I also try to keep in mind what types of functional items you'd really want to have. Um, this build, so there's like a desk with a computer at it, there's um, a TV in the living room, and you also have, even though this build is pretty small floor plan wise and it's all one level, you still have like the kitchen area with the little breakfast bar, and then you also have a whole dining room table area as well. So I can really imagine people playing in this with a family. What items are kind of your make it or break it items for family homes? I'd really love to hear what item you feel like your Sims just can't do without. You should comment down below and let me know what your favorite item is to put in your builds and whether or not I include that. So this is this part right here with the custom floor tile. I think this is something I was super proud of with this build. So if you didn't know, if you can make custom tiles by 
is pressing Control F and then that will let you place floor pieces in quarter tile sections so you can create a lot of custom fun designs either with the completely blank floors or just with the wood floors even and just make it look super cool and super different or rotate it around if you don't like how it looks. And I feel like that's kind of one of the biggest like secret pro tips is being able to do stuff like that with the flooring because then you can just get better angles. You don't ha you're not stuck with just squares and it's definitely something that I didn't know about until I like, watched one of the Little Simsies videos and I saw her do it and I was like, oh my gosh, you can do that with Sims floor tiles? Oh goodness. And it kind of opened up a whole new world of me for being able to create like cool shapes uh, in living rooms and kitchens and stuff like that and really break up the interior of a house nicely. Well, the backyard is also really cool. Um, had this nice pool and I ended up doing some funky things with the shape of it. I started out with a rectangle and then I decided I was not a fan of it, <laughs> so I changed it. And I'm really happy with how the backyard looked too because I usually don't bother with putting colored trim on my pools. I just kind of leave them as white or if I'm building like a super shishi house, sometimes I'll use like the pretentious like marble trim or something. And um, because I was going with kind of the dark theme for this house in general, I decided to use the dark pool edging and it ended up looking really good. And then I ended up using like the smooth keeper little fencing around the backyard and I feel like that just made it really pop. And I'm just a really big fan of how it came out. Like I really want to play in this house. I'm going to have to make myself a whole new Sims family to put in it. And I'm just really looking forward to using this and I hope that all of you guys feel the same way. Um, so the nice grill out back, I really love this grill. It's really pretty. I love that it has a little mini fridge attached to it. Um, obviously it's just still just a grill in terms of being able to use it, but the mini fridge is such a fun detail. I also put out all the, a bunch of the tiny little lights that come with the new kit because then that way at nighttime you have this really nice glow in front of your house and it's just, it's very aesthetic and very fun. I feel like it's a very realistic touch as well. Uh, I feel like, you know, I don't have a house with a pool in the desert, but if I did have a house with a pool in the desert, it's definitely something that I would want, right? <laughs> um, I also made this nice, I put the little pergola out back so then kind of have two distinct spaces of having the pool space with like the lounge chairs um, and then having the kind of the couch space um, with the grill and stuff and I feel like that was really nice. I was bummed that we didn't have like a little umbrella to in the base game or in the new kit that we could use to cover up the loungers, but eh, you know, you don't win, win them all. <laughs> so now going back inside, um, now that I have everything laid down, I like to go back and paint everything and then kind of put in some clutter items um, and just a little bit more decor. I decided to go with a nice like kind of light greeny blue color for most of the living space just to kind of brighten it up from the otherwise super neutral color tone and I wanted it to go with the blue couch but also not be the same exact color because that would just look bad. And then for the kitchen I wanted to break things up a little bit so I brought some bricks in and I felt like that added a little bit more texture to the space while still keeping it pretty neutral like color wise. So somehow deleted my rug. I don't know how I managed to do that but it was very confusing when I was building and suddenly the rug was just gone. I was like, excuse me? What's going on? Um, I was try I tried to hang up a bunch of cute paintings. Um, parents room was a bit of a struggle just because it was kind of an interesting shape and I just I didn't really I wasn't vibing with any of the end tables. I was trying to figure out what I wanted to do with it. Didn't want to paint it the same colors for the rest of the house, but then I was kind of stuck on like the blue greeny color. Um, that was definitely the toughest room to do. Kids room was also pretty challenging because I kind of committed to the pink theme with the beds, and then I wasn't sure if I was vibing with the bright pink wallpaper. But then it's like, oh, the bright pink wallpaper doesn't really go with the rest of the house, but it does go with the kids room. I feel like with the kids room, you can be a little more crazy with the colors. So, I don't know. I'm kind of undecided whether or not I like how that room turned out. I'd love to hear what you guys think about the kids' room. Does it go with the house or was it a major flop? Uh, definitely let me know. And yeah, just putting out some more functional items. 
putting out the rug. I feel like my favorite building tip with rugs is sizing them up up and down. It's so helpful when the rug is just slightly is the wrong size and you're like, oh, I like this rug. I just she was a little bigger, a little bit smaller. And just using the bracket keys, you can size objects up and down, which is just, it's so useful. Um, I think that's probably the build trick that I use half the time or most of the time. One weird thing, you can see it with the window right now, is that the window actually glitches with the curtains that come with the pack. And I found that to be really weird. I was like, wouldn't they have tested this? So that way the curtains and the window that came with the same exact kit work together and don't clip. But also it's EA. I feel like they just generally don't test things. So for the sake of sounding really judgmental, I'm, I'm feeling a little bit judgmental. <laughs> uh, the last couple bits of this was just doing some landscaping. Um, I feel like desert landscaping, I always have so much fun with it because I live not in a desert. <laughs> so it's kind of fun to play around with stuff that I definitely don't have at my house. Um, and I like to try to mimic the surrounding landscaping um, of the world. So that way the lot kind of blends in nicely. By the way, if you want to download this lot, it is on my gallery. Uh, I think it's called Modern Family Desert House or something like that. And again, I've said this a couple times, but it only has a base game and the Desert Lux kit. So everyone should be able to download it. Um, yeah. And anyways, uh, thanks so much for watching. If you like this video, please give it a big thumbs up. And subscribe to me on YouTube and also comment down below what did you think of this? What should I build next? Let me know. I'd love to hear from you. And have a great rest of your day. Bye everyone.